Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the default security posture that just came out in Unify Network 9.5. By default within Ubiquity, it allows all traffic. So if we create multiple different VLANs, they're able to communicate to one another. And then we have to create blocking rules to allow them to not communicate. But they do have that default security posture that says block all and that's what we're gonna look at. So let's get started. I've spun up another UDM Pro Max. This doesn't have any devices currently connected to it, but you could see that we only have the default network and the default security posture is allow all. We hover over the I icon, it says this will apply to all segments of the network, including zones, VLANs and interfaces, unless specifically overridden by custom rules. But what we're gonna wanna do right off the bat we're gonna to wanna to click on the block all. It's gonna come up with the warning, change default security posture. New VLANs, ethernet port profiles and devices will be isolated by default while existing ones remain unchanged. So our default network will be unchanged. It's gonna be able to get everywhere, but any other VLAN that we create is gonna be blocked all. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna proceed. Now with the default security posture of block all, let's go ahead and create a couple new VLANs. So I'm gonna create new virtual network we're going to call this one just guest and we're going to let it do whatever it wants. So for the IPs 192.168.2.1, that's completely fine. But you could see right off the bat, if I click on manual, that they're going to have this network isolated. If you were allow all, this isolation check mark is not going to be there. So that's pretty much all that this does. So I'm going to add this network and then we're going to add one more and I'm just going to call this staff. And you can see again that it is isolating this network and we'll press add. I did create one more VLAN, which is VoIP. So if we wanted to create an ethernet port profile, say we had some VoIP phones and we were using the back of that phone to plug into our computer, that's when we'd wanna do the ethernet port profile. So we'd go over to overview and then we'd scroll down and you could see ethernet port profiles and create new. Since our security posture is to block all, you could see the tag VLAN management is blocked all by default. So if I call this staff slash VoIP, we're gonna put the native VLAN as our staff. And then if we go to manual and scroll down to set the voice VLAN, we're not able to do that. We need to scroll back up. We need to go to allow all and then scroll down and we could set the voice VLAN for it. So that's just something to be aware of. Let's now go take a look at our zone matrix and see what this is actually doing. So if we scroll down, you can see my zone matrix and we see internal to internal and I've selected that. Right here, we see the isolate networks and I didn't create this. This is by default for that block all default security posture. So it now says that the source zone of internal three subnets, source subnets, 192.168.2, 3 and 4.0, it's gonna be completely isolated to any other network in the internal zone. So we're not gonna be able to get to our default network. If I'm on the staff network, I can't get to the guest or I can't get to the VoIP. But what I still can get to is each one of their gateways. So right now I'm on 192.168.3.0 and we can see that by going IP config and that is my staff network. So if I go and I open up a web browser and I type that in or I type in the gateway, we're gonna be able to get to my UDM. If I type in 2.1, we're gonna be able to get there as well. And that's something you're not gonna to wanna to have available to people to be able to hit your gateway. So we need to write a new rule. Now, what we need to do for us not to be able to get to the web interface, we need to create a policy. And what this is gonna do, I'll say internal networks, no access to web interface. The source zone is gonna be our internal, the action is going to be blocked, and then the destination zone is gonna be our gateway. From here, we need to list specific ports because if we just block all right now, we're not gonna be able to get out to the internet. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll click on list, and then we're gonna create a new list. Now this list is gonna be for HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH, and then we're gonna to have to add those ports in. So port 80, port 443, and then port 22. Once we've added that list in, we need to add that policy. And once I do this, we shouldn't be able to get to the web interface of our UDM Pro for any of the gateway IPs. That policy has now been written. So if I go to 192.168.3.1, we shouldn't be able to hit that. If I open up a new tab, go to 192.168.1.1, which is my default network, we won't be able to get there either. But if we bring up a command line, and this may be something that you wanna block out, we're still gonna be able to ping. So ICMP messages, 
will still go out. So we can create another policy to block this off. So we'll go back to the UDM Pro Max and then we're gonna create a new policy. This policy, we're gonna say block ICMP to gateways. It's gonna be from our internal network, we're gonna block and then the destination zone again is gonna be our gateways. Scrolling down, we have our IP versions. We're gonna click on IPv4 and then we're gonna go and do custom protocols. I'm gonna type in ICMP and then we're gonna do all and our ICMP type is also gonna be any. And once we press add policy, we're not gonna be able to ping that any longer. So I'll bring up a command line and then I'll press the up arrow. We'll do dash T. And once we add this policy, we should see those dropping out. All right, and now you can see that the requests are being timed out. But if we tried to ping something like uh, maybe 1.1.1.1, we're still able to do that. We still have internet access. We just can't do ICMP messages towards our gateways and we can't access the web interface. Within our Unify network application, there's more than one ways to do block or allow. So we could always do it from our zones and we could create policies, but Ubiquity gives us different choices of how to do things. We could go to over to our objects and our objects is gonna let us select either a network or we could do a group of devices and then we could secure those devices or we could add a route. So if we have two different WANs and we want these um, devices to go out WAN 2, say they're phones, we want them to go out the separate WAN, we could do that, or we could do it through a VPN. We could also put quality of service on that, so we prioritize our voice and video traffic. We could also go over and we could look at our policy table. This is gonna show us all policies by default, or we could look at our firewall rules, and then we could scroll down a little bit and we could do blocking, or we could do allow. I'm really glad that Ubiquity added that default security posture because I do know that people would rather have everything blocked and then add allow rules on top of it. So it's great to see in this update. Let me know what you'd like to see for a firewall video down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.